Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to look at some projects that have come across my bench. Those that uh, we're going to look at for potential uh, videos. And uh, those that uh, will be worked on in my shop in the coming days. And if I don't plan to, uh, to do a video of one of these and you'd like to see how uh, to take these apart and service them, please leave a note in the comments section. I will try to uh, do my best to, uh, to do a video for you, time permitting. Well, the first two that are on my desk here actually came by way of an auction from our local uh, fishing club that I belong to. They kind of have a green auction out there, and it's uh, one of those where if you're not using the tack any, tackle any longer and you want to uh, recover some of your, your funds maybe, or you just want to make sure that they get a good home to go fishing again, sort of like second chance tackle, uh, you could bid on those uh, those pieces, and uh, both both people will be happy, right? You'll get a new reel to fish, and well, you'll uh, also get uh, reimbursed for uh, tackle that maybe you're not using any longer. Well, these are the first two. These are two that I purchased at the auction, and uh, we're going to do videos on at least one of them, and uh, we're going to take one of them fishing for sure. But I just thought we would start with those. So the first one that I, I picked up, you can never go wrong with. This is the Abu. It is the 7000 series. It's the Ambassador 7000. And uh, it's just a beautiful reel. Anytime I have the opportunity to purchase one of these, I go ahead and do that. And most of the time, well, they go fishing with me. They don't even get back out into the marketplace at all. This one's running nice and smooth. The uh, fellow that had these reels took care of these reels. It's always important, of course, when you look at them to, to make a judge based on the condition of it. And, uh, well, this one's just a beautiful example of the Abu 7000, a reel that's hard to beat. I'm certainly going to tune that up and likely take that one fishing in the fall. The second one is actually the predecessor of the Siegler reels. This is the release reel, the release SG, SG meaning small game made in Virginia. Very interesting story behind uh, release. So uh, maybe I'll start with that in a video and uh, we'll show you how to take this lever drag apart. We'll show you how to service it and keep it running. It, uh, it's a little tight, but it might also be tight because, well, we got a lot of line that's all bunched to one side there. Folks are asking me, what's the line guiding mechanism on these when they don't see a level wind guide. It is. It's an educated thumb that moves the line back and forth as you reel it in. And well, if you're under the, the strike, perhaps, you uh, you wind up uh, just kind of focusing more on fighting the fish than moving your thumb back and forth. And sometimes line bunches to the side. But uh, this company actually started an American design. Then they went to Asia to uh, have the frames made. These are all aluminum frames. And uh, they found out that they just didn't have good quality control and they moved everything back to Virginia. And then uh, eventually, I believe it was acquired by Siegler. And uh, well, the rest is kind of history. Good, good reels all around. Just take a look at the knob on this thing, kind of tells you what this reel is all about. A nice big power, power handle knob. Well, another one came in. <laughs> this one came in from my grandson. How do you like that? He was fishing in a local uh, pond and, and somebody uh, had approached him and said, you know, I have some old reels and rods. I don't use them any longer. If you like them, they're yours. And uh, of course he thought immediately of me because, well, these things have been sitting in a shed or a garage or something for quite some time now. This is a Silster reel and you can see just how dirty and uncared for it's been. But you know what? It turns. And a lot of folks have these. This is called the Silster Vertex. It's a 35 size reel. We're going to do a video on that one to, to show you how those uh, those go. Well, I mentioned that auction that um, was held at the local flea mo uh, local club, and the fellow there uh, purchased two of these. And these are the Penn Mariners. These are the 49s with the dual clutches. The one clutch controls the free spool. The other clutch controls the, uh, this one is the free spool, and the other one is the override for the anti-reverse dog so that you can backpedal the reel and stop it if you want to go that way. Well, he got these at a good price. He tells me that the price he paid was less than it would take to load the reel on with 
wire line. I don't know how old that wire line is. We have two of them. They've been on the boat for some time. They have a good amount of corrosion on them. But since I was at the meeting and he purchased them at the meeting, he just kind of handed them right over to me and asked me if I couldn't tune them up for him and uh, get him ready to go for the big fish like shark. So uh, there you go. Next one is a special shout out. This one actually comes from Victoria, Australia. And I am constantly amazed at the reach that my channel has. And I appreciate everyone who's viewing these um, projects outside of the US. I certainly never thought that would be the case when I, uh, when I originally came here. Well, these came from Peter. Peter doesn't want this reel back, but he's, <laughs> he wanted to encourage me uh, and my channel and thought that giving me a reel in the bag project from down under would be a kind of a fun thing to do. And so he sent it on to me and uh, this one is a Shimano bait runner. And boy, if he didn't take every piece of the reel apart, we're going to see how that one goes. <laughs> it could be, I could be in for a bunch of chuckles, or I could be in for, well, a nice uh, example of how to do this uh, particular reel. It's a Shimano Aero bait runner. There's no urgency on this one, but uh, if I do get a chance to do this, uh, well, just keep. Uh, Keep using that notification button in the, uh, the, the video box there. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And if you have and haven't hit that notification button, do that. And eventually you're going to see that this is going to show up as a real and abide project uh, from Peter in Victoria, Australia. And uh, I will be happy to do that and to uh, show you how to do that in case you have a Shimano Aero bait feeder. Well, this one just uh, showed up at my doorstep just as I was about to do this video, so I'm not quite sure what this is. This one comes from Pennsylvania, and it comes from Bill. And it's a Daiwa, or at least the box is a Daiwa. And let's see what we got inside. a Daiwa Regal. I do remember him telling me that it was a Daiwa Regal, so we'll trust the box this time, unlike the other one. And uh, I think this is the one where it's just not working right after he had it apart. He's included in, uh, looks like an oscillation gear in here, maybe. Well, some clips, some shoes. Yeah, something, something's certainly clicking away there that shouldn't be clicking away. So we'll see what we can do. This is a, uh, I've done several Daiwa Regals in the past. I don't believe I've done this version of it. It's a more modern version. So uh, we'll see if we can't uh, capture that for Bill so that the next time he does it, he does it uh, where he doesn't have to send it into me. Okay, and we got uh, Dan. Dan has sent plenty of reels in before. Dan is out in California, and he's uh, sent me, I think these are three reels if I remember. Maybe he's popped another one or two of them in here. So let's see what, what awaits me from Dan. Okay, three pens. And it's interesting, folks, uh, folks think I only work on pen reels because I get a lot of pen wheels in for service. Well, that's not the case, but uh, a lot of times they do come in. And the first one, of course, is a Daiwa. That's all right. This is a Daiwa Capricorn 4500. It's a nice reel. I like these a lot. Folks ask me for alternatives to pen. This is one of those uh, alternatives. Uh, the Shimano uh, series, the Nasi, is another one that uh, is a good alternative to it. And depending on what your price point is, Okuma, has a couple of them that are, that are okay as well. Well, here's a, uh, a pen, 210. I think the one that is always desirable of the two of these that are the ball bearing ones uh, are the, is the, the pen 10. It's got a smaller format to it, but this is, this is essentially the uh, pen pure 209 on steroids. It has the ball bearings on each side as opposed to the the other formats that it has. This one's a rough rider. It may have a bad uh, bad bearing in it. Or it may just be that this hasn't seen attention in quite some time. 
but uh, when this is tuned up, you can be able to cast this one a mile, and it's a, uh, it is a nice reel overall. And then we have one more from Dan. Looks like an oldie but a goodie. These are the reels you just simply cannot kill. This is a Penn Long Beach 60. It's uh, got a, a little a brother, the 65. It's got two big brothers, and a, or three big brothers, and a 66, 67, and 68. And look at that. Even with all the corrosion and everything else, this thing is just spinning free and easy. So we'll do a good cleanup on this one, and uh, we'll see what we can do. This handle is kind of stuck there. We'll sh maybe we'll show you how to free that handle up as well. Well, and then finally, I've got one. Well, it's not spinning free and easy. It's absolutely jammed up, and uh, it's not doing anything on the gear side. But when you turn this, the free spool does work. So there's something going on in the gearing mechanism that's caused this to, to break. This is an older version of the Ocean City 112, also, also known as the Bay City, uh, besides the broken handle. Well, we're just going to get in there and try and figure out why this is not moving. We'll use that as a why reels fail and how to correct those failures um, video uh, in, the, in the coming days. And there's one more here. We don't see these a lot. Quite honestly, the price of the reel and the price to service the reel is about equal. So a lot of times these break and you just plain don't see them. Uh, but this one's an optics. It's the Optic 60. I did do a video on the Optic 60. So if you have one of these and you're interested in how to service it, I also did one on the 40. They're essentially the same. But this one's got a gear grind. And you may not hear it, but you can feel it. It's a vibration that just goes round and round. So there's a couple of causes for that. Interestingly enough, one of the causes may be that the last time it was apart, it was missing the shim washer that goes between the main gear and the bearing. I'm not sure. He did tell me he's had it serviced in the past. It's very easy to lose these little shim washers during the service. And uh, well, if you do, then you've got play or slop in the main gear. When you get slop in the main gear, you get a vibration. And that's kind of what I'm feeling here. It could also be that the teeth are worn on it, but there's no real evidence that the the teeth on that gear would be worn because, well, nothing else is really beat up here. You know, if you saw all kinds of paint loss and salt and, and other kind of stuff all over the reel, you'd say, well, it just hasn't been cared for. Maybe salt got in there and caused it to grind down. That doesn't appear to be the case. This one appears to be pretty clean. And, well, we'll see if we can uh, fix that one with a a shim washer and a general service. So that one uh, may become the subject of a video as well. Although again, I've done several of those videos on the optics now and go ahead and look in the library if you uh, want to see how to get those done. So I hope you've enjoyed the preview of some of these and I hope you stay tuned and watch them. I would encourage you to subscribe and if you do subscribe, please hit the notification button so that you know when these videos are going to be published. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. And to everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.